Hello everyone, my name is Abdullah Daoud and I'm going to present our work on analyzing Android's application framework using dynamic analysis. This work is jointly done with Srin Pugil, who is also my PhD supervisor at Sispa Hall Center for Information Security. So the application framework is actually a massive code base that exposes a wide range of features in the form of APIs. Those APIs are accessed by app processes over IPC. Of course, there is a security and privacy risk, and therefore the application framework acts as a reference monitor and protects those APIs with permissions, explicit checks on the calling Linux user ID, or other checks. All of these security checks combined form the security policy of the application framework. Unfortunately, there is no uh, uh, formal specification of this policy, and this in fact has been problematic for all stakeholders in the Android ecosystem. For example, App developers tend to write overprivileged apps simply because they do not know the optimal set of permissions for the APIs that they use. Those apps would confuse the users and erode their trust in the developers. On the other hand, as the application framework developers lose the comprehensive view of the security policy, they are likely to make mistakes, uh, such as exposing sensitive APIs without a protection or creating conflicting policies. This, of course, enables malicious developers to escape the security policy enforcement and eventually attack the users. But even more problematic than that is the OEM customizations, which are known for extending and changing and even in some cases weakening the default security policy. Given that those customizations are often closed source, the security policy or the security analyst cannot easily evaluate them. And again, this places the end users at the danger of being compromised. Given this unsatisfactory situation, several works studied the different aspects of lacking uh, security policy specification in Android. The first category of solutions focused on modeling the security policy and built what is known as a permission mapping, which is simply a map between each framework API and the set of permissions enforced by that API. The very first work to do this is a store away by uh, Portafield et al, which used dynamic testing. However, this approach didn't perform well in terms of code coverage. Therefore, other works, namely bscout and explorer, came along and used static analysis, which is known for achieving high code coverage, and built new permission mappings. Most recently, another work called Arcade by Afar et al also used static analysis, but it proposed in new dimensions, uh, such as identifying the relation between the enforced permissions, whether they are enforced in conjunction or disjunction of each other. It also introduced path sensitivity, which means that different permission sets are required for different execution paths. Finally, it also considered the non-permission checks. Now, with these permission mappings, the community became able to build tools, for example, for supporting app developers in writing least privileged apps or detecting malware. Other works built an abstract permission mapping to scan the framework itself for vulnerabilities in the access control enforcement, while a couple of other works analyzed the OEM modifications. The bottom line here is that all of these works used a form of a permission mapping as the main building block in their solutions, and therefore they inherit the limitations of these permission mappings, which would affect the precision of their own results. This brings us to our research question, which is how to evaluate the completeness and the correctness of the produced permission mappings, and also the results of the applications that build on top of them. To answer this question, we need to first study the methodologies behind these different works. Well, as you can see, the striking observation is that since Stowaway, which used dynamic analysis, all subsequent works used static analysis. Now, while static analysis achieves high code coverage, it's, it is also known for uh, some limitations that cause over approximation in the results. On the other hand, the results of dynamic analysis are sound for the ex uh, choosing execution path, but generally suffer from low code coverage. Now, from the shortcomings and the strengths of each approach, one can argue that static analysis and dynamic analysis can work better together when they are combined uh, instead of uh, when they are applied separately. In fact, combining both approaches has been customary in the software engineering domain, especially for problems like uh, malware detection. And this is exactly the core and the inspiration of our idea. So we first proposed dynamic analysis tool to complement the current methodology that has been tipped to static analysis for almost 10 years. 
Once we have this tool, we can revisit the results of previous static uh, solutions to help verify, refute, and even uh, improve on them. With these two objectives in mind, we designed a tool called Dynamo. So Dynamo builds on an idea that is common with Stowaway. Simply to detect the permissions enforced by a specific API, we run a service that is unprivileged and call that API from that service. If this API is protected with permissions, it will consult the package manager service, which acts as a central decision policy point to check if the caller has the required permission. Now, to precisely capture this permission check, we use a dynamic instrumentation framework called FRIDA, which uh, is used to instrument the target API uh, and the permission checking API from the package manager service, such that they would report the stack traces, call parameters, and return values whenever they are called. So now, when the testing service calls the target API again, the instrumented APIs will report all call details and results to the reporter module at the instrumentation server. By analyzing all this information, we can precisely associate the call to the target API with the required check permission. However, for this approach to work, we needed to be able to detect permissions that are enforced in conjunction as well as in disjunction of each other. So to detect permissions that are uh, uh, enforced in conjunction, meaning that along the execution path, we escalate the privileges of the testing service by granting it the currently missing permission and then performing another testing iteration. But instead of actually granting the testing service the required permission, which is uh, not practical, we instrument the package manager service to kind of uh, fake granting the permission to the testing service. So in the, testing, uh, in the next testing iteration, the execution will proceed beyond the enforcement of permission A, which would trigger other permission checks along the execution path. Now, to detect permissions that are enforced in disjunction, uh, we rely on the fact that all of these permission checks need to be checked first before making a decision. Take the following snippet from Android's open source project as an example. This utility method would allow the access if any of the four permissions is granted to the caller. You can see that the execution is interrupted after all checks have been made, meaning that none of them is granted to the caller. So this means that the testing of such API would report multiple permissions at once. We take this as a sign or an indication of permissions enforced in disjunction and create multiple branches for testing. Each branch takes care of one permission and gets tested uh, separately to capture further permissions along the execution path as we have seen before. Now, we apply uh, different techniques to detect uh, each type of uh, security checks uh, which can be classified into uh, three categories. The first one is the inline the checks on the Linux user ID and BID of the calling process. And the second category is the centrally managed checks like app ops or user restrictions. And the final category contains the uh, security checks that are dependent on the API's parameters. Unfortunately, we cannot cover those techniques here for time constraints, and therefore we refer you to read our paper for more information about the design and implementation of Dynamo. So now, after we built Dynamo and used it to build a permission mapping for uh, different Android versions, we found a chance to evaluate it in four use cases from literature. First, we conducted a consistency analysis in the application framework to uh, detect unprotected inter interfaces and misconfigured APIs. And we found six unprotected APIs in Android 6 but we also found uh, 65 APIs with permission misconfiguration where the permissions are enforced on the wrong uh, user profile. We when we conducted the same analysis on Android 10, we found one API that uh, tends to be unprotected since Android 7 and of course above. And upon reporting this issue to Google, we received a bank bounty accordingly. So, in the second use case, we revisited the results of AF, which is a tool for detecting permission redelegation vulnerabilities in the system services. Out of uh, 33 vulnerabilities that we analyzed by Dynamo, we found uh, five vulnerabilities that are false positives. In the third use case, we analyzed about 350 APIs from the developer's documentation of, uh, of 110 and found 66 APIs with incomplete or missing uh, permission annotations 
in addition to nine APIs with wrong permission information, which was quite surprising to us. Now, finally, we compared the permission mapping produced by Dynamo with the state-of-the-art permission mapping from Arcade for the same Android version, which was Android 6. As such, we found 951 APIs that exist in both mappings, but to our surprise, uh, Dynamo reported the 343 APIs that were missing from Arcade. The Arcade uh, authors uh, partially attributed this to not including the entry points of the APIs in the analysis. However, we also found other reasons like uh, the most common one, which was that Arcade was not able to analyze the native APIs. Of course, this in addition to other technical challenges that we will discuss later. Similarly, we found 247 APIs that are missing from Dynamo, and we can attribute this to two reasons. First, some of those APIs were not deployed on the device, and the second reason was that uh, due to the input validations that we couldn't bypass with our input generation technique. So next, we take a look at the common APIs, which are most interesting to us uh, between uh, both mappings. So out of 951 common APIs, we automatically matched uh, about 76% of them. And therefore, we consider them confirmed given that Dynamo's results are sound. And we also found that Dynamo extended the permission mappings for about 100 APIs. And there are two reasons for that. First, we found that Arcade focused on analyzing the security policy of the entry point API and overlooks other APIs that can be further called from within the, that entry point. This, of course, leads to reporting only a subset of the actual enforced security checks. Another reason is that uh, Arcade actually relies on heuristics for ending the analysis. For instance, they end the analysis, as you can see here, when the caller identity is, uh, is cleared. However, we found cases where the security checks are enforced against the caller's identity even after the identity is cleared. And therefore, such security checks will be missed from Arcade's mapping. As of the discrepant APIs, the manual analysis found 30 APIs in Arcade that report wrong permission mappings. The Arcade authors attributed this to issues in string resolutions, but we also see other possible causes like the inability to resolve runtime run permissions, uh, runtime uh, variables, sorry. And this, of course, causes the confusion in which path to follow during the analysis, which in result causes uh, imprecision in the results. However, we also found 73 APIs that were incompletely modeled by Dynamo, mainly because of the coverage problem. Another reason is that Dynamo cannot capture the complex uh, security policies and struggles, uh, struggles with inferring the input's effect on those policies. Finally, we couldn't manually verify the causes of 23 discrepant APIs. It is worth noting that after we shared our findings with our kids author, they were prompt in fixing their results and sharing the, uh, the fixed results with us. However, while we upload this, we unfortunately found that uh, over approximation is still causing imprecision in the results, and their fix was mainly focused towards the incompleteness problem. So by now, I hope that you can see that neither static nor dynamic analysis alone can uncover the intricate details of the framework. If you are not yet convinced, let's take up the problem of building and permission mapping as an example. We have seen how compromising precision for performance can limit the depth of the static analysis. On the other hand, dynamic analysis takes deep method execution for granted, but generally suffers uh, from uh, low code coverage. We also encountered cases where Dynamo fails in detecting complex policies, which was possible by Arcade with some processing overhead. Another important point is that static analysis uh, relies on expert knowledge to search for security checks, and therefore they cannot detect new checks. On the other hand, Dynamic can at least infer the presence of such uh, security checks. But we also found that dynamic analysis is not capable of, uh, uh, all, uh, of, of, of addressing all analysis tasks, such as detecting broadcast permissions, which was possible using static analysis with uh, minimal overhead. So in conclusion, similar to analysis to other analysis problems from uh, other domains, we have shown that dynamic analysis goes hand in hand with the static analysis in, uh, in better analyzing the application framework, and of course, verifying results of previous solutions. As such, we believe that building a fully-fledged hybrid approach should be the next natural step in this line of research. With that, 
I end my presentation and uh, open for questions. Thank you.